Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Place of Finding of Isaac Antwerth Plus. Easy wins lately, four in a row. If you'll excuse me, my articulation is a little off today. Let's just see what our seed is first here. 2QLG0C2R. Um, I have like a, a blocked salivary gland. Apparently it blocked my ability to think rationally as well. Because I just took Tiny Planet without even freaking thinking about it. It's not, I mean, it's like a canker, so I don't know if it's actually a blocked salivary gland, but... Just a, is it one of the, whenever you get things with your mouth, it's always the worst, right? Because it's like they're sensitive to begin with, and then you're constantly talking and chewing and breathing, and oh, the air is cold today. Oh, that food's hot, 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 you know? Oh, I can't stop touching it with my tongue. So I might have a little. I mean, I sound the same. But uh, with some words, you might hear a little bit of a. You probably wouldn't have even noticed. Mostly, I just wanted to talk about my. My blocked salivary gland. My salivary gland makes all the girls want to dance and take off the. You know. It's from the, the D12 song. Still waiting on my salsa, Marshall. Where is. When does my salsa come out? I pre ordered it at Sam the Record Man in May of 2003 and yet it still does not exist wonder if there's still so like probably the biggest record store when I was a teenager in uh, in my hometown and in Canada in general I think was uh, HMV which I believe is a British chain his master's voice they're used to even when I moved to Vancouver in like 2012 there was an HMV downtown which back then I was like oh my god they haven't all gone out of business right now it's crazy how fast the landscape changed for like this company that had been around for 50 years even when like file sharing was at it. I wouldn't say at its peak, I guess, because I don't really understand. I don't, I don't know the numbers, I should say. But even when, like, you know, Napster and stuff like that got started, HMV was still going strong. Still a, a legion of, of teenagers and baby boomers willing to pay 25 bucks for a CD. That they only like one song on to begin with. <laughs> By the way, you might be saying, ah, nostalgia. I'm not nostalgic at all. That company bent me over. They, they squeezed every last ounce of profit out of its consumer base and then went out of business because a better option came along. In the form of Spotify, Google Play Music, etc, etc. You get what you freaking deserve. I mean, they, 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 to be fair, it's like... I mean, it is probably better. Um, to be fair, it's hard to compete with uh, those services to begin with. And, like, to be doubly fair, I'm pretty sure every time I stream a song on Google Play Music, the artist probably gets, like, less than a tenth of a cent. But, hey, man. <laughs> I'm not saying them's the breaks. Trust me, I'm, I'm in a business where, you know, I'm ad-supported, you know, on, on YouTube especially. If you watch my content on YouTube, um, with and you see the ad... You know, I'm, I'm getting paid peanuts, but many people don't even see the ad. Honestly, a lot of my... Perhaps it's a little ironic, I suppose. A decent chunk of my uh, change comes from uh, YouTube Premium. I think, like, YouTube Premium, it, it pays the creator based on the time... Like, the amount of time you watch their channel relative to the amount of time you watch other people's channel. That's where the real benefit of putting out, like, four hours of content daily for ten years comes in. <laughs> Dude, honestly, we get so little opportunity to use the D6. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with the D6. I like it. Eh, it's almost good enough. Ooh, that's very good, though. Everybody else is cutting together these ten-minute and one-second-long Fortnite compilations. Nah, 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 nah. It's all about making, uh, 10 hours of Isaac content weekly. To study or fall asleep to. Lo-fi, 
Binding of Isaac to chill to. Chill, City Pop. To relax to. I'm gonna go in here. Because now it's like if we die, we die. If we get... Like one spirit heart is just barely... Just barely not worth it in my opinion. We're gonna keep that to protect our spirit heart for the boss fight. So we can maybe still beat the odds and get the deal with the devil. This is also great. We could have died, come back as Dark Judas. And then used... Uh, that as like a mechanism to you know get the spirit heart but then we wouldn't have been able to take a deal with the devil it's a bit of an interesting one here i there's a very simple rule i think and it's anytime you see um diplopia in a shop you oh no <laughs> you take it y'all you love to see it you love to see it yet again we're still gonna take diplopia we're going pretty low here. We're, we're throwing everything we got at the at the game here. Yeah, we'll still take the Plopia. Because for 15 cents, we get another key. We get a two of clubs. We get a gulp. There is no trinket available. We can just hold the gulp. And we get a... Oh, you know what? We also got a free item right there. That's a good point. And it was Humbling Bundle, which is sick, dude. And, uh, I mean, we could reroll IV bag if we're able to get a battery charge as well. This is a very, very strong run. How did I knock the bomb away from every single competitor there? Absurd. Absurd. Anyway, it's a good day. This is the rare, like, Tuesday Isaac. I recorded this post, um, Team Unity, because Team Unity ended a little early today. Not because it was a bad show, actually because it was, like, a great show. We had a lot of trouble figuring out what we were going to play. We ended up playing Monopoly Plus on Steam. And uh, I don't think we could catch lightning in a bottle more than once, maybe. But let me out, please. Um, it ended up being one of the most exhilarating games of Monopoly I've ever seen in my entire life. Unfortunately, it took two and a half hours. So by the time it ended, you know, we were like, do you want to play another one? You're like, God, no. <laughs> it's like a five hour commitment, dude. So we could pay five cents for two bombs. I think it's a it's a bad deal. No battery charge for sale. Uh get me out then. Just get me out. Although two bombs would be really useful for our boss fight, depending on what our boss is, but Ah, uh, this guy he's just slow, but he'll blow himself up. Um so yeah, it was good, but I still had a little bit of time left over before I had to cook dinner, so you know. Got to just uh, whoop. Got to just uh, play a little bit of Isaac here today. Normally, I probably would just uh, catch up on a new episode of 90 Day Fiance with this surprising amount of free time that just appeared. But uh, lucky for you, there was no episode of 90 Day Fiance this week, so there's nothing to talk about. Just been watching The Expanse. Great show. Almost, almost done season three. If you want to know where I'm at right now, so I'm almost to the Amazon episodes. And, you know, I know people say, like, the show just keeps getting better and better. But, like, this show just keeps getting better and better. I'm only on season three, to be fair. It, it has uniformly improved, I think. Hold on. It's just, it's an annoying fight, okay? We're working on it. We're gonna get there. We got him. Strike to claim it. Strike to claim it. And he's got him! Then you take the deals with the devil here, um, because we want to become Dark Judas anyway, and now we have become Dark Judas anyway. That's a really, really good turn of events. Crushing it. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. That's pretty much, uh, that's how today's gone. I also, uh, I think I've been telling you guys, but uh, it's kind of a one-sided conversation here. I'll ask you about your day a little bit later, I promise. Uh, went for a nice jog this morning. First, so, if for anybody who's been a while, maybe you heard about my running history, or maybe it's been a day, I don't know. The timeline in uh, Lordran is convoluted. Uh, in 2014, I wanted to get in shape. I started running. 
I got to the I started I did this thing and I, I will always recommend this it's a it's a little program called couch to 5k so basically the the gist of couch to 5k is you start with like essentially no running experience or skill whatsoever uh, if you follow the program exactly within six weeks you'll be able to run a 5k without stopping you might be slow hey the progress you know it, it's incremental but you know it basically the way that it starts is like uh you you start by doing like runs and walks so it'll be the first day is like run 30 seconds walk a minute run 30 seconds walk a minute and like repeat that cycle for like 20 minutes by the end of it you know the final day is just like run five kilometers generally speaking at like an average running pace like half an hour to 35 minutes will be a 5k run so i did that and then i like you know i got into it i was having a good time i was feeling the runners high i uh after i did uh couch to 5k there's like a second program called bridge to 10k which is uh you know six weeks after finishing couch to 5k you can get up to running a 10k I did like the first week of that and then just ran 10k. It's like once you get the bug, you're just in. Yo, this is pretty sick. Then, you know, probably like four months after running 10k for the first time and, and then doing it like, you know, three to five times a week since then, I tore my meniscus, you know, basically didn't run until like you know, I, I do like the odd jog, you know, like the the guy with the hat from James Bond, odd jog. But uh, apart from that, basically no running at all for like five years, I guess. But anyway, so I went back and I was like, you know, I want to get in shape again. I, I want to lose uh, a little bit of fat while preserving as much muscle as possible. I love to talk about myself, I'm sorry. I meant, in my heart of hearts, I said, hey, let's make this as quick as possible. Instead, I told you the long, boring way, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. <laughs> anyway, um, that'll give us HP later. Uh, there's other, like, you know, cardio options, but I honestly just find, I'm like, I'm a little bit inverted from most people. Most people hate running inside, love running outside, um, and I'm the exact opposite. But I completely understand it because I love uh, biking, but I can't stand the exercise bike. So I, I, I'd much rather run on a treadmill than uh, ride an exercise bike. I've never used like a fancy Peloton. But... Uh, for now, that's where I sit on that one. So the first day, I did, the, you know, I think you keep like a little bit of a cardio base and from like a musculature standpoint, I'm in decent shape. Um, so I was like, you know what, we'll do five minutes on, one minute off, five minutes on, one minute off. So I did that for like four cycles and I felt pretty good. Today, I was like, eh, let's just run for 25 minutes. Just ran for 25 minutes, felt good. Hopefully hit the 5K on, on Thursday and be, you know, back to cruising. I really do, though. Like, I recommend, for cardio at least, couch to 5K, if you're interested in getting into running. It's like, you know, with when, with workout programs, you ask people how to, uh, oh, how do I get started, like, lifting? You're going to get 25 different answers. For runners, you ask how to get started running, probably, like, 95% of people are going to be like, do couch to 5K. The other 5% are going to be like, just run forehead. So you you know if you want if you'd prefer to do that that's fine. I find it uh, I don't know you gotta you gotta be cut from a certain cloth I think in in both a negative way and a positive way to enjoy running on a treadmill. But if you ever believed, or if you never believed when I said that I enjoy mundane tasks, you should believe me after I said that for certain. <laughs> It was a great time for that puberty pill. Ooh, baby, I love my way. Although, now that I think about it, mom's knife, tiny planet, a little spooky. I find it, like, meditative. But the, the trick is, in order to get to that meditative aspect, you have to punch through the boredom. There's going to be, like, 
I was running, I was watching Malf stream, my Bluetooth headphones conked out. I was like, oh, I got 20 more minutes of just, you know, staring at these numbers slowly going up. Five minutes was extremely bored. After that, euphoric. <laughs> Not really, but better. Considering how slow we were to get through the first couple of floors, this is interesting. I actually feel like uh, we might make boss rush, and that's kind of hilarious. I do hate, though, that in order to shoot all four knives, you need to wait for a Loki's horn proc to happen. The actual best outcome for us, I think, you just wander in and go, I got that, 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 that. <laughs> anyway. So that's where I'm at. I know people hate fitness talk, I understand. No, oh, that's a luck upgrade. Thank you. Not necessarily hate, but like, you know, I mean, I've been there. When you're not into the fitness thing and people are talking about fitness, it's like super annoying. Because you're like, not only are you talking about something I'm not interested in, but like, I feel bad for not being interested in it. <laughs> I Trust me, I, I, I get it and I've been there. Is what it is. It's all good. Oh, did you hear that? Ah! That's gonna work. Anyway, this run is like... it It's that pleasant run that is actually definitely harder than it looks. But still, like, extremely easy. This is one of the lesser mom's knife runs I think we could have right now. But also, like, still probably gonna dominate pretty easily. The only thing that we suffer from is a lack of range. Oh, dude, the orbital! I was literally just about to ask, or just about to say, I should say. Orbitals would be so good for us, because we're gonna be getting in, you know, up close and personal against these enemies. And then, wouldn't you know it, we go ahead and get some. Um... Just when I thought you couldn't be any stupider, you go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. Keep in mind, we also, we do have range, it's just slow. Ma of the Void is, is a really great, both offensive and defensive item, it's just going to take us a bit to, to really get to using it, you know? It, it, and, you know, it relies on our luck stat to some extent as well. Anyway, that's where I'm at. It's just been a nice, kind of like low-key start to the week over here. Yesterday, can I tell you something? First off, on Friday, it's Tuesday now, so we're, we're it's ancient history. But on Friday, I recorded 10 videos. I think I will take. It has been a long time since I had a day like that. Probably I have not had a day that productive like since we had to start moving So it was like a big milestone for me. It was just a great day busy, but but very productive The other thing that's got me jazzed Yesterday was Monday on Monday. I recorded four northern lion tries <laughs> Basically My life since December and don't get me wrong. I've been loving the northern lion tries um series and i've been loving the reaction to it people are having a great time and i'm going to talk about that more in just a second but i since december roughly i've been scrounging for games to play for northern lion tries and then uh finding one to two recording those at the at the 11th hour getting the video out and then rinsing and repeating the next day because there's no backlog that's basically what it's been like. Great luck upgrade, good timing. To have even the slightest little bit of cushion there is is beautiful. I'm very thankful. I'm not this is a good run and I'm excited about it. So it, it's it's been nice to have a little bit more uh, you know, of a backlog. Not a huge one, but that's okay. I think the the Northern Lion Tries series has has taught me things. Not just about, you know, YouTube or Steam, but about myself as a, as a human. Because I've been... Reroll, please. That's pretty great. 
I've been complaining, like, ah, there's nothing to play, there's nothing to play. And then people hit me with suggestions for stuff to play, and the suggestions, I, I'm not mad. Because the suggestions are, like, literally always good. You know what I mean? They're always like, hey, what about playing this good game that you missed out on? And I've been hesitant to do that, and the reason is, hold on. That being a little bit, you know, disappointed with the releases on Steam, or at least like what I would traditionally consider with the releases on Steam's level of quality, has forced me to get outside of my comfort zone. And as a result, I think it's, it's led to me producing some content that... Let's go. Previously, I might not have thought to produce... And there's always a risk inherent there when you play stuff like, you know, Egg is Broke, Heart is Too, or, you know, God of Jim, if you're familiar with stuff we've played recently. Um, but there's also a potential reward. I started playing that stuff, realized people liked it. I think of it, and I just came up with this, this is not rehearsed. But, like, when I went to Korea, I was uh, a vegetarian. I would I know it's a long time ago. This was like in 2010. I was I was a, a an environmental vegetarian back before it was commonplace to be a a vegetarian for environmental reasons. Now, I'm not trying to get a Nobel prize for it because I only did it for like 6 months and I'll explain why momentarily here. Um and moreover, Mostly I did it because me and Malf, I just talked to him one day and I was like, hey, I bet you can't go vegetarian. And he's like, bet you I can. And then we both just did it because it turns out it's easy. But when I was interviewing for jobs in South Korea, they always ask you at the end of the interview, they're like, do you have any questions for us? And I'm like, yeah, I'm vegetarian. Um, is that okay? Like, will I be able to find places to eat? And they're like, yeah, it's no problem. You can just eat fish. And I was like, ah, actually, fish is meat. And they were like, ooh, yeah, that's going to be tough. So I decided, when I moved to Korea, I, I was gonna get out of my comfort zone on that. I was gonna temporarily put that on the back burner. I'm framing it as if it's a good thing, because it's a metaphor. In reality, you know, could have stuck with the vegetarianism, and it would have been a struggle, but maybe, you know, if you're struggling for a good cause, then that's fine. You know what I mean? Hey, could you just, like, get over here? Scorpion style? Thank you. But as a result, you know... Of, uh, of getting out, basically being forced to get outside of my comfort zone and try new things. I, you know, discovered a lot of foods that have gone on to become favorites for me. I, you know, I worked with some people. Well, I didn't really work with anybody in Korea that was like this. But I had teacher training in Korea with some people that were like, I don't like rice. And you're like, okay, like if you really don't like rice, that's fine. But you're living in Asia. You should really start eating some rice. If you're allergic or you, you gag when you eat it, that's fine. But, like, I think if, if you are willing to put yourself in that period of uncertainty where you're like, I don't know if I'm going to like this or not like this, you're, you're going to end up having a more enriched experience. You're going to try things you wouldn't have normally tried. You'll find things you hate and you'll find some things you like. But there were definitely some people um, in our circle of friends that basically just ate pizza... Uh, every day, which, you know, you're an adult, you can do it if you want, but I'm just saying, the the folly with the suggestions is that people are suggesting stuff that's like in my wheelhouse, and I'm like, no, nah, I already know I'd like that. I already know the content will be like a, uniformly like a 7 out of 10. What I need to do is scrape the bottom of the barrel, Sometimes you're going to be eating Teflon, but sometimes you're going to be eating the best parts of that, you know, delicious steak. And I think that's that that's the end of the metaphor, more or less. <laughs> I'm a little frightened. The run is in a slightly spooky position. Are you kidding me? The man said give me something spooky. Yeah, I think, you know, that, and that's the Northern Lion Tries, now you understand that it's like a, a clever movie title, you know, it's like Parasite. It's got multiple meanings in this case. Not only is it Northern Lion Tries new games on Steam every day, it's Northern Lion Tries, you know, new styles of video that previously he thought were beneath him. It is actually discovering are a lot of fun to not only produce, but people are enjoying them as well. Would you look at that? 
2020. It's off to a decent start, you know, as long as we're specifically talking about um, my YouTube channel and not the state of, like, world affairs. <laughs> uh, you know. You gotta laugh, sort of. In some way. Maybe? I don't know. What do you got for me? Two of spades. Not worth much, and then a whole heck of a lot of I'm excited pills. Red chests are uh, compulsory opens. I'm starting to be in disbelief that this is not an XL floor. Seems very long. That's okay. I mean, we got mom's knife, and uh, we know how to use it. Well, not really. In fact, that's, if anything, that's kind of the problem. We have Mom's Knife, but it, it doesn't really work that well with Tech X. Or uh, with Tiny Planet, I should say. I don't know about that one, Coach. We did get HP, and we didn't lose anything too valuable, I think, so I'm okay. Anyway, that's what's going on in my life right now. Not too much, just honestly, back, back to work and... Very much enjoying it. I think it's infectious. But we've talked about that too much. Apparently, I did also curse my uh, hockey team. I... Uh, they've been on a, a historic winning streak by their standards. And uh, they've won seven games in a row. I said if they... Win that seventh game, we're going to play Vertiginous... Well, let's go back a little bit. I said if they win their sixth game in a row, we're going to play Vertiginous Golf on the stream on Monday. The meme came true. We played Vertiginous Golf on the show that Monday. Two games later, they're still winning? Or, I don't know. The, the timeline's slightly messed up. Just go with me. In a broad sense, this is all true. <laughs> I said... Uh, if the Canucks win against the Rangers, we'll play Verdi. The Canucks beat the Rangers. I felt bad for Josh and Malf, you know, because their their teams aren't involved with this, and Verdi's not always the most fun game to play. So I said, hey, we don't have to play Verdi. That's my bad, guys. Reroll me. I'm ready. Range Canucks went up against the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight. Ooh, so tasty. Lost 9-2. So, suffice it to say, the winning streak is over, and uh, if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan out there, so am I. I, I apologize. I don't believe in superstition, but it is, it's a hilarious circumstance of events, okay? It's, it's just funny, but also I apologize in case it's not funny to you. I mean, a 9-2 loss, if you don't follow hockey, a 9-2 loss is, it's insanely bad. Like, I'm trying to think, a 9-2 loss is probably the equivalent to losing, like, 6-0 in soccer. It's up there. Like, like to a, a roughly equivalent team. It's like losing... It's like the other team scoring more than 20 runs on you in a baseball game. Maybe even more than 25. Like, it happens every year, but there's probably like... I don't know, maybe like five nine-goal games annually. It's, it's low percentage. Let's put it that way. I also have to tell you... I mean, this is just a recap of my life recently, apparently, but... Um, I've, I've demonized services like Blue Apron recently. Over the past couple of years. We, we were with a service that was local to, you know, our city. Uh, for like... Two years. And I was constantly frustrated with like a variety of different things. Excuse me. Definitely not taking that garbage item. And I'm not opening another red chest. For no reason. Um... I was constantly frustrated because the recipes said they were going to take... They were like, it's a 20-minute recipe. And then the 20-minute recipe started with step one, preheat your oven, which takes like, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes by itself. And then it was always doing nonsensical stuff. Like you'd, you'd make your own mustard or something. And I'm like, dude, 
You're supposed to be like convenient meals, and you're, you're like, take the mustard seeds in a, uh, a mortar and pestle and grind them into a fine paste. Add horseradish to your desired level of spiciness, and I'm like, just relax. I'm I'm trying to you know get this meal out in half an hour like Rachel Ray. Anyway, and the other thing was, you know, it wasn't super cheap compared to like buying your own groceries. It was obviously more expensive. But then on top of that, like if you ever got something that was like, if you got a, a meal that where like the protein was chicken, you got like two chicken breasts. You got a you know four chicken thighs. Pretty standard for two people. If you got a meal that was beef. It was like, here's like a, a whisper of beef. I get it, beef's expensive. Maybe, couldn't you have just provided it beefless then? Could you have been like, hey, it's supposed to be beef teriyaki, but instead we just made it with chicken, because the, otherwise you'd be like, where's the protein? Anyway, we canceled that service because it sucked. I thought all services like that were horrible. Turns out we, we got onto a new one because there was a free trial, or a, a heavily discounted trial, and it's like really good. It's actually, uh, it's, it's called HelloFresh, this one. I don't know, people have had different mileage with uh, all of them. But this one is like the meals, the recipes are simpler and way less annoying. Like the one last night was like, cut the potato into quarters, bake it, and then cook the steak. And I was like, first off, you didn't need to tell me that, come on. But also, thank you for mercifully providing us with a meal. Now, uh, that's easy to make. Now, a meal I have made myself without having to get it through a service like that many times before, I will admit. But still. No more of this. I, I, I still remember the, the nightmare meals. One of them was like... You had, you had to make your own flautus. Like, they gave you corn flour and then had you like work it into a, a goopy dough and then turn it into like a like a Mexican flatbread sort of thing and I was like you know 45 minutes of trying to work this dough into the right consistency I was like this this is not this is what I pay other people for to make it and then I go I'm like yeah $13 flautus that sounds delicious I paid you and then I've still got to make the flautus George is getting upset. Hey, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, that's watching. I will see you next time. See ya.